And the first question goes to your card, of course. Um, what did love at first sight with Arango DB, and why? It was. I, I was fearing that you would ask me to explain Arango DB. <laughs> well, they, I mean, you know, those gentlemen that are here, they're, I mean, we have two of them to actually get into what Arango DB is all about, so we, we, we're covered. We, we talked about uh, containers earlier with Forto. So yeah. here we're going to probably talk about software containers. Uh, so apologies in advance for the highly technical uh, uh, dimension of uh, Arango DB. But I think Arango is a very fascinating company. Um, we all talk about the, the, the importance of data, the importance of analytics, how that's transforming a lot of companies. And that data uh, resides somewhere. And um, there's, been a, uh, there's been a revolution, a number of revolutions in databases and in the way you store, organize, uh, organize data. One of the key trends has been uh, the emergence of so-called graph um, graph data models where that leverage the, I would say, relationships between pieces of data in a novel way. And um, uh, this has been a, you know, a, a, a enormous trend in software development. Um, but the issue with it has been, and this is what Arango DB has been able to crack, um, is to do that at scale and is to be able to provide the power of uh, graph, uh, graph models at scale for real enterprise applications and uh, for massive, massive deployments, because this is, what, this is what companies need, ever more, ever bigger uh, data uh, amounts and, uh, um, and, and deeper analysis of, uh, of, the, of the underlying data. So, uh, good transition with, <laughs> with X, because uh, uh, this has not come out of uh, nowhere. It's been a long incubation process, mm -hmm. and, um, and when, we, when we met the team, we were very, very impressed by, by the technology, and now it's time to, to boost it and uh -huh. to, to make it available uh, globally. Well, Claudius Jorg, the stage is yours. Yeah, thanks a lot, and Kurt, perfect. Maybe we should just stop here and ask questions out of, the, out of the round. This was a very good introduction. So then, the idea today is to present you a little bit around the bean. As your, uh, sorry, as Kurt said, it's a, a little bit a technical product, and there is a point where business guys try to explain tech, and that is sometimes not the best idea. So I asked Jörg to join me today because his superpower is to explain stuff like that. <laughs> And yeah, we, um, as we started around be a few years ago, so we had in mind that we built a database that enables people to analyze and handle data much easier as it is today. So, and at that point of time, and it's also today. So we developed something that adds the capabilities to add relationships to data and that was at a point where everybody spoke about big data. We spoke about setabyte of data in the place, billions of terabytes of data. It was a very terrible high number of, of, of uh, stuff to handle. And on the same time, there was technology to handle this more and more. But the main issue was that people have no insight in this data. So what is the real value if they look at their data? And that is where, we, where they're struggling. And that is exactly the point where graph database can help. It can add the relationship to what most of the people call the dark data. So 55% of the data what you have is more or less dark. This means you have no insight in it. So you just save it, you just have the cost factor, but you get no real value out of it. And that is the first point where a graph database can help. And then it moves to the next one. But that is definitely a point you can explain much better. Um, yeah, actually, I would l just like to take that chance because I really enjoyed the first talk from Forto. And uh, this for me was like, uh, I was smiling almost at any slide because it was like a perfect uh, <laughs> example of like a graph use case. We actually have a number of uh, customers who are also like in supply chain or related uh, fields. And if you saw that slide, you have individual entities, but what really counts is the connection in between. And if I had to summarize, I believe this is really what a graph database is about. It's like focusing on the relationship between those different individual entities and then also enabling uh, the uh, analytics across uh, those. 
So and if you look here, what Gartner, for example, says about graph databases, they are the foundation for the modern data and analytics. Or the other statement is even also very bold, so that 50% of their clients, what looks at AI, are in also thinking about using graph databases. Another maybe good point here to give a little bit the idea what graph database is about. So DB Engine is a website that makes a ranking for databases since eight years more than 360 database products on that. They take everything in tweets, LinkedIn profile mentioning, everything what you can assume. And you see that graph databases are the most trending technologies, even more than double than any other database technology. And what is RoundDB itself? RoundDB is a graph database, what we call a graph and beyond database, because it cannot handle only structured, it can also handle unstructured database in one core in one da uh, database engine, and that at scale, as Kurt said at the beginning, what is very important, that can really scale to a large number of nodes. And what you can do with that, you can also do analytics. Graph analytics is the part what becomes then most interesting here, and what is really new to the business, what is also what we tell you, to, uh, what we want to explain a little bit more today, is graph AI. So the capabilities that you add even more insights to your data. So, and RoundDB is an um, open source product. It's also an open core business model. There is an enterprise edition, a community edition. We have more than 12 million downloads overall. We have more than 650 production installations. What got confirmed, we have more than 11,600 star guessers. That's the likes on GitHub platform. And the logos, what you see in the background, gives you a feeling who is already using RoundDB today. And trust me, from an engineering point of view, it's really interesting but also challenging to work with like, this range of customers on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, I think despite the diversity of uh, users and customers you just saw, what really uh, unites them is that m most of them uh, try to analyze or handle big data on top of a RangerDB, like largest instances we have out there are somewhere uh, around 50 nodes, which is uh, pretty, pretty interesting in terms of uh, being a single database deployment. And I think big data is one of those buzzwords which has been around for a while, but I actually feel it has changed over time. So if we look back like 10 years ago, Hadoop age, et cetera, it was really, it was, uh, the definition was actually volume, variety, velocity. So you can already see it was a lot about collecting data. I didn't really care about the value in there. I just cared about like, oh, how much do I have there? And this is where the definition has changed. And we also see that with our users. This is why a lot of people come over to us because they actually want to get value out of their data. And so also just in terms of definition of big data, we have moved beyond those three initial Vs to actually carrying a more how can I get insights out of this uh, mass of data. Maybe just uh, this is also reflected in what Claudius mentioned earlier about uh, dark data. So uh, as a corollary of that, if we look at uh, the data collected, which has been collected under the old definition of big data, really like over 50% of the data is simply not usable as of right now. And I think this is the interesting part where this graph technology can really help us to gain more value out of it by first of all, identifying those relationships between otherwise unusable data items and hence turning this dark data, over 50% of the data, into something usable. Furthermore, it's not only helping us with this previously unused data, but even with the uh, usable data we had before, we can now extract much more value because we can focus on the relationships in between. So this is what we're actually doing at a daily basis uh, with those customers. Uh, this is what uh, our team is working on. Uh, the next interesting step, what we are also already working on a little bit, but I think where the future really comes in is graph AI. So right now, this is really just taking the data which is there, but uh, you, if we are taking modern machine learning, modern AI technology, and we can even predict much more relationships. So for example, let's take the supply chain use case again. Where is likely to be failures? Because we've seen some stuff in the past. So how can we predict like which links might be failing or which links might be missing in a social network? Work. This is really where uh, we can get a lot of value out of that. In Silicon Valley, this is actually happening already quite a lot. And uh, so, for example, Uber Eats, they need recommendations, uh, turning uh, that into a graph. You have users. 
uh, you have food orders, and their goal is to predict what will you order so they can display it to you. And with graph machine learning, they significantly increase <coughs> that and also hence by their revenue by a factor. Uh, furthermore, and this is really also breakthrough, is in uh, drug discovery. Previously, you have to experiment that there are a lot in like a wet lab, and about treating a molecule as a graph looks pretty similar, right? Uh, you can really just simulate that and hence shorten the experimental period by uh, quite a bit, even making it onto the cover of nature. Most of us probably use some kind of map software to get here today. If you look at a map, uh, all of us, uh, this looks like a graph as well. And again, we can apply graph machine learning here. And Uber, Google did that. And they really inc uh, increased the prediction of ETA times by, uh, by also a large factor. So we actually knew when we would arrive here. And Google was much better than uh, your car's navigation system, by the way. And not that difficult, by the way. But yeah, that is what we wanted to present to today. Uh, RongoDB as a database, what we have today in place, what we are actively selling to our customers last year, year to year growth was over 100%. And RongoDB ML, what we presented today, what is the future? What is even a very exciting development? What got a lot of speed in the last 12 months? Thanks. Wow, well, this is pretty mind blowing to me. I don't know for you guys, but it says, one of a kind model, and I, I'm going to be the geek over there. I'm sorry about that, but um, I have to ask, especially for one person in the audience, why the avocado logo? Um, as we're already out of time, make a short story. We all love avocados. Of course we do. <laughs> of course we all love avocados. We have a lot of avocado swag. If you want to just contact us, we still have a bunch <laughs> in the car.